All right. Hi, everyone. Thanks for coming to Intro to Robot Design. My name is Maria, and I'll be giving the presentation today. So some things to know about me are that before being on Husky Robotics, I did FLL for almost eight years, and I specialized in designing for my teams. I have a lot of experience designing advanced FLL robots, so I'll do my best to give you guys tips and tricks for designing a good robot. Okay. All right, so before we get into the robot design specifics, uh, it's really important to make sure that you understand the rules of the game and know what missions you're doing. It's not productive to start designing a robot when you don't know what attachments um, you want and what qualities you want your robot to have. So first, read the rules of the game and decide as a team what missions you want to do. Okay, so there are some considerations before building a robot that you want to think about. Uh, it's important to understand how to group the missions you want to do, which can be done in numerous ways. The first way is same location, which is self-explanatory. The second one is same motion, which means if two missions have very similar actions you can do to get, um, you can do to complete the mission, uh, you can do them together with the same attachment. So for example, if there were two pieces on the game field that required you to push a button to complete a task, you could use a similar attachment and do those missions together. You can also do one mission on the way to another to save time as shown in the red arrows on the slide. And then lastly, if a mission requires two separate steps, for example, picking up something and depositing it somewhere else, you don't have to do it all in one run. You can pick up the item, bring it home, and put it somewhere in another run. In terms of robot design considerations, uh, there are, these are the really important ones on the slide. Uh, you definitely want to consider where your robot goes on the map because that will determine its max width. Um, and you, you also want to know the rules of the game uh, for robot design considerations. And then another overlooked thing is having access to your power port, which you can see in the red circle on the picture. Um, because if you can't charge your robot, um, it, that's just not going to work. Um, in terms of features, deciding what sensors you want on your robot, which motors to use, um, methods of attachment, and type of, sen and type of wheels is important. Important, sorry. Uh, sensors will help increase reliability, which I'll be talking about in another presentation at 1.30. Um, I recommend using the big motors for your wheels and depending on, um, and depending on whether you prioritize um, having more compact or more powerful motors, you can choose between using the big motors or the medium servo motors for attachments. I recommend using the normal wheels because it's easier to turn with um, and treads are usually used when you have to run over terrain or something like that. When building, you want to start super simple. So focus on what qualities you want your robot to have slash design requirements and the simplest way to achieve them. For a lot of new teams, they have no idea to where to even begin. So I recommend doing some research on the internet for existing robot designs. If you look up five minute bot on the internet, there are a lot of designs and guides that your team can use. So this slide has some examples of those. Um, the first one on the left has a wider build and is lower to the ground, whereas the other two have the motors directly under, uh, underneath the brick. The last robot on the right has a light sensor and ultrasonic sensor on it at the front of the robot. Um, consider what sensors and where you want them when you're building your chassis, because in some cases it could hinder the ability of the sensor. So for example, the light sensor has to be very close to the ground in order to function best. So if you decided to add it on at the last minute, it could be really difficult to get the optimal height. There are also these box looking pieces in orange, uh, and those are also in your kits. Uh, one looks like a rectangle and the other one looks more like an H shape. You can see it in the picture on the slide. Um, these pieces are super, super helpful in my experience. They make your robot and attachments more sound and they keep them intact. Um, so like your attachments and robot just isn't flimsy and like won't fall apart. I would definitely recommend ordering a bunch of these, like extra ones as well, because they're super great. You can order more of them um, as well as other handy stuff from a website called Bricklink, and I would definitely recommend doing that. 
moving on to attachments. Um, the first thing to focus on is what real world example it's similar to. If you're trying to push something across, across the ground, it's really similar to a bulldozer. You probably want a shovel shaped bucket thing on the front of your robot to push it around and make sure that it stays with your robot through soft and hard turns um, with like little walls on the side. Another thing to focus on is how it works. So uh, there are three types of ways it'll work. The first one is passive attachments, which is like the bulldozer example. And these are the ones that don't require motors or any sort of like stored energy. This could also, this could also, another example of this would be like a prong sticking out of your robot to pick up or drop off one of the game pieces that have loops on them. Um, mechanical attachments are the ones that use stored energies. So uh, that would be like rubber bands or springs, et cetera. These are generally less popular um, because usually the designs are super advanced, but feel free to try it out. Um, the most popular attachments are motorized attachments, which use the remaining, remaining motors on your robot other than the ones that are driving to complete missions. So um, before you make the attachments, uh, you have to prototype first to do proof of concept. Um, so you always want to start super simple, like I said previously. Um, you're looking for proof of concept, not the most aesthetically pleasing. That said, don't so sacrifice its quality. So still make sure it's a good prototype, but don't like make it perfect. Um, make sure that it's like a good sound design that you can program your robot to use. A key thing here is to make sure that you have the robot tested out versus a human. Uh, versus a human messing around with an attachment. The robot using an attachment versus a human is very different because we can slightly adjust our hands or make fine movements, but the robot cannot. The outcome of you testing an attachment versus the robot will be drastically different. So to get, um, to get a good uh, prototype, it'll, um, you definitely wanna make sure that the robot is able to use it. It will also probably take multiple tries depending on how hard the mission is to complete a prototype, but when iterating and making changes to improve it, never disassemble something that works. If you break your next iteration or something bad happens, it's always good to have something that works to go back to. And then similar to this, uh, you should also document your prototypes in progress so that if you forget something you did, you can always use them to your advantage. When, when putting everything together at the end, um, it's really important to look at how easy it is to swap attachments. Since you're on the clock, you want to use pieces like axles to put everything together and, keep, and also keep the area where you're swapping attachments open and easy to mess with. It would suck if you like wasted your time putting an attachment on during a match and then you couldn't complete a task at the end of the match to score points. And then similar to that, um, make sure you practice putting on attachments and do like a staged, comp staged competition runs before the actual event to feel more comfortable. Uh, and then that is it for me. Does anyone have any questions? All right, thank you everybody for coming. Uh, the next meeting should start at 11 o'clock. You guys have some leeway in between meetings. Uh, have a nice day and thank you for attending. This presentation will be posted. Uh, you guys should be shared with all of you guys. So if you have like any questions or if you need to look at something, it should be shared with you. Again, thank you for attending. I'll see you next time. Thank you.